Hey guys, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and the official hack cheat for Super Nintendo just got released, and I've got a brand new tutorial for you, and I've got over 300 games up and running. So let's take a closer look. This is version 2.20, released by Cluster himself. He's the original creator of the hack cheat for the NES Classic. So we have Super Nintendo support now, but he's saying 75% of the games work just fine, but 25% of them might have issues. But he's saying you can use RetroArch to play the rest of the games that have issues. And for the RetroArch, we're not really going to cover that in this tutorial, we're just going to concentrate on the main app, and we'll cover RetroArch in a future tutorial. But since this is the official app, he will be doing updates for it, and I'm sure we're going to have 100% compatibility before too long. So for this tutorial, I'm going to download the HackChi 2.20 zip, and I'm going to post a link down below so you know where to find this. So I'm going to go ahead and save it, and then after it's done downloading, I'm going to open the folder, and now I'm going to drag that to desktop. Now I want it in desktop just so it's easier to find everything right now. We're going to open it up. This is a RAR file. And we're going to take the contents of that and drag that to the desktop also. Now we're going to open up that HackChi folder. And inside here is everything we need to run HackChi. But before we get started, if you've already previously hacked your console, you need to get it back to stock state. So I've done various different hacks on my console already. And if I don't get it back to original state, I'm probably going to have a lot of errors. So to start with, I'm going to go up to Options. And inside there, I'm going to go down to Reset to Factory Settings. And then I'm going to hold A. Now it's going to tell me to reset. And sorry guys, you're going to lose all your saved games. But if you don't, you're going to end up with errors. And HackChi isn't going to work properly. After it resets, just select your language, then hit OK. But we're not done yet. We need to install the stock kernel back on the console so it's back to its original full state. So whatever HackChi that you used in the first place to hack your console, you can use that same program to bring your Super Nintendo back to its original state. So this is an older version of HackChi that I used to hack my console, and it contains a dump folder that has my original kernel. And it's very important that your original kernel is in this dump file or this won't work correctly. Now we're going to go up to the kernel tab, and we're going to select uninstall, and that will bring your console back to its original state. Once again, this is just for users that have hacked their console. If you haven't hacked your console, you skip this step. So to bring it back to its original state, go ahead and click yes, then follow the instructions, and now our console is back to a fresh start. And for advanced users, you can also use the newest version of HackChi to uninstall everything, but you're going to have to have a dump folder that contains your original kernel. So you're going to have to copy your original kernel from wherever the location is and paste it inside the dump folder for the new HackChi. So now it's time to open up our new HackChi. So the folder is called HackChi2, and we're going to click on that HackChi application. So I'm in Windows 10, so when I clicked on the application, it gave me a security message. All I need to do is go up to More Info and Run Anyway. Now the first time the app opens up, you're going to have a new selection screen, and you're going to be able to select the Super Nintendo Classic Edition. And this app does support multiple consoles. You can do the original NES, you can do the Famicom version, and you can do the Super Nintendo Famicom version. After selecting your console, you're going to get a welcome message saying everything's very simple to use now. Just select Add More Games and hit Synchronize. Well, it's not quite that simple. We're going to have to do a couple other steps first. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up to Settings and go under Console Type and make sure that I selected the Super Nintendo Classic Mini. If not, I might end up with a lot of issues, so I'm just confirming. Next, I'm going to go to the Kernel tab, and it's time to dump the original kernel. So we'll go ahead and click on Dump Kernel, then select Yes. Now we need to follow these instructions. We want to go ahead and hook up our Super Nintendo via USB cable, the one it came with. Now we're going to hold the Reset button and then turn the power button on. And we're going to hold that for about three seconds and then let go. After letting go, either it's going to automatically dump your kernel or it's time to install the driver. So if you have not messed with HackChi at all, it's probably time to install this driver. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and select yes. I already have the driver so I don't need to do that. You'll click yes and the installation of the driver will begin and it's pretty quick. It's going to open up a command prompt window and then as soon as it's done installing, it'll just say press enter to exit. And after installing the driver, if it doesn't automatically start dumping your kernel, you might have to start over. Just close that little window, go ahead and turn your Super Nintendo off, unplug it. Now we're going to go ahead and hit that kernel tab and start the process over. We're going to select dump kernel, then plug in your Super Nintendo via the USB cable. Go ahead and hold that reset button. Turn on the power, continue to hold reset for three seconds. Let go. Now your kernel should automatically start dumping. So I've sped this up a little bit. It takes about three minutes. So we've dumped our original kernel, and that's going to be located in a folder named Dump inside our HackChi folder. So let's open up our HackChi2 folder. Now we got that folder called Dump. Inside there is our original kernel. Now let's go ahead and copy this kernel and paste that somewhere that's nice and safe. 
So I went ahead and made a folder on my desktop called Stock Super Nintendo Don't Touch. And that's where I've pasted my stock kernel so it's nice and safe. So now it's time to go back to HackChi and we're going to flash a custom kernel. But before we do that, we're going to have to turn off our Super Nintendo. So go ahead and power it off. And the red LED on the Super Nintendo might not turn off. Give it about 30 seconds. If it still doesn't turn off, it should be safe to unplug it at that point. So let's click Flash Custom Kernel. Select Yes. Now follow the command prompts again. Go ahead and plug in your Super Nintendo. Hold your finger on that reset button. Turn the power on. Let go after 3-5 to five seconds. And the custom kernel should start uploading. And that process takes about 3-5 to five minutes. Okay, we're done. We can upload games to our Super Nintendo now. Go ahead and click OK. So it's time to add your own ROMs. I have the whole Super Nintendo collection, so I'm just going to add every ROM. So all of my ROMs are compressed inside of a zip file. And if you open up that zip file, it contains an SMC format ROM. So guys, I can't include any links for the ROMs, because YouTube doesn't like that. But if you're looking for a ROM set for Super Nintendo, a good place to start is just go ahead and Google Super Nintendo Complete ROM Set. And that'll set you on the right track. Just start searching that, and you'll find something. So let's go ahead and click Add More Games. And now you want to navigate to wherever the folder is where your Super Nintendo games are. Once you locate your folder, go ahead and select all the games that you want to add. I got 765 games inside this folder, so I'm going to go ahead and add them all. So after selecting the games I want, I just select Open. Now it's going to start transferring the games to HackChi and building a folder structure. And again, I'm going to fast forward the process here, but since I selected over 700 games, it took about 15 minutes to load all these games. So my games were already compressed to start with. They were at about 650 megabytes. But after loading them in the hack chi, they got compressed even more. They're down to 582. But unfortunately that's still too big. I only have 237 megabytes of memory that's available for games on the Super Nintendo. So I'm going to have to trim my list up a little bit. But what's nice about doing it this way is it's going to save all my games in the hack chi folder. So all I got to do when I want to add new games is just open up hack chi and all these games are available. I just select the ones I want and I can transfer them to my Super Nintendo. But I would recommend if you're a beginner, don't try and add 700 ROMs to start with. Add like 20 ROMs. Learn how HackChi works, make sure everything's working, and then go ahead and start adding more ROMs. So now that we have our games loaded on the HackChi, it's time to go ahead and download some box art. So we want to go ahead and select everything and highlight it, make sure it's checked, then go ahead and right click, and we're going to select Download Box Art for Selected Games. So what it's going to do is do a Google search for the name of the game plus Super Nintendo, and it's going to try to match the box art for each game. So don't expect your box art to be completely accurate, but it does still do pretty good. I'd say about 90% of it's right. Just imagine if you had to download the box art for each game individually. That would take forever. So it's a very good thing that it has this automatic feature. So all these pictures along with the games are going to be stored inside that Games SNES folder. Also, if you notice the bottom there down in red, the size of the games is increased now because we've added pictures. It's increased by about 66 megabytes. So it's time to start trimming down my list. So I'm going to select the original 21 games and then an additional 193 games give me a total of 214 games. Now depending on what ROMs you choose, it may take more memory or less memory. ROMs come in various different sizes. They can be 1 megabyte, half a megabyte, 3 megabytes. They vary quite a bit. So for testing purposes, I'm trying to max out that memory. I'm trying to get as many games on here as I can. And unfortunately, the original 21 games take up quite a bit of memory. They take up about 84 megabytes. So after I get this test done, I'm going to try to get over 300 games by not selecting that original 21 games. So for settings on this test, I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to leave everything the way it was, original games and root, automatic and subfolder. So your Super Nintendo should still be powered on. And on the HackChi app in the bottom left corner, there should be a green light. If for some reason there's not, go ahead and turn off your Super Nintendo, unplug it, then plug it back in and turn it on. Wait for a green light to show up. Once the green light's there, it's time to hit the Synchronize Selected Games button. And again, we're going to go ahead and fast forward. This process took about six minutes or so. Okay, we're done. It's time to go test this out and see if this worked. But before we do that, we're going to wait for this red light to turn green. Okay, now it's green. Now we're going to turn off the Super Nintendo, wait for it to turn red. Now it's safe to unplug it, and we're going to go test it. Okay, it looks like we got success. We got the original 21 games on the home screen here. And at the end of this, we have a folder, and that gives us access to the rest of the games. Now, the games are divided equally into folders, and each folder has 30 games in it. And that's just using the stock settings. On the next test, we're going to change that folder layout, and it's going to look a little bit different. So, obviously, I haven't had time to test each game to find out if it works, but I've tested about 20, and all 20 of those games did work. I did test two-player, I did test rewind, 
I test save games, I tested overlays, and everything seems to be working. I'm sure I'm going to run into some issues, and other people out there are going to let us know what the issues are too. But hopefully app updates will come in the future and correct some of these issues. Okay, this test seems to be going pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to get over 300 games on there and get those up and running. So for this test, I'm not going to select the original 21 games because that takes up quite a bit of memory. So now I'm going to try to select 300 random games and see if we can make them fit on here. And like I said earlier, depending on what games you pick, it could take up more memory or less memory. So I've got 301 games selected and it looks like they're going to fit. Now I'm going to go up to settings and I'm going to change my folder structure. I'm going to change it to custom at the bottom. And then maximum games per folder, I'm going to make that 60. Now it's time to synchronize our games, but before we do that, I need to plug in my Super Nintendo, power it on, and wait for that green light to show up. There it is, so let's hit the button. So now it's going to bring us to a different menu because we did the custom folder menu. Now we're going to select Split Equally. I've tried a couple different settings, so I haven't had much luck, but the Split Equally is working. You can't select anything that says Original Games because I don't have any Original Games on there. So it's going to split the folders equally, starting with 60 in each folder, and the last folder is going to have the remaining. So as you can see here, since I have all those ROMs already loaded in Hackchi, it makes it really easy to swap out games. All i got to do is open it up and select the games I want. And just another reminder, make sure that light in the corner turns green before you turn your Super Nintendo off. And there we go, success! We have six different folders with 301 games. So the folder icons aren't very pleasant to look at, but when you click on one, it does take you to a menu where you can see all the box art. And whatever menu you're on, when you turn it off, the Super Nintendo remembers that and takes you right back to that menu. There's also ways to make custom icons for your folders, but we're not going to get into that today. We'll talk about that in a future tutorial. Alright everybody, thanks for watching. I appreciate the support. And if you liked the video, please click that like button and subscribe. And if you want to see more of my videos, just click any of these links.